بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد Continue on in our treaties, Nawaqid al-Islam, the nullifiers of the Islamic faith. We reach the fifth Nawaqid from the Nawaqid al-Islam al-Ashr, where Shaykh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah ta'ala, said, Al-Khamis, man abghada shay'in mimma ja'a bihi rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, walaw amala bihi kafir. So he said, the Shaykh, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, that whoever despises something the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has come with, even if he practices it, has disbelieved. So this is a very important principle to let us know that even though a person may practice something of Islam, but if their heart is not content with that practice and that belief, that they can still become a disbeliever, meaning that what's inside does not match their dhahir. And this is the characteristic of the hypocrites, that inside of their hearts, they hate Islam and they hate what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed, but on the outward, in front of their brothers and sisters or the in front of the Muslims, the believers, that they uh, pretend that they love Allah and His Messenger through their actions. and. This also is munasib, as in recently we just heard news of someone who we're aware of, uh, uh, someone who we considered a companion and a friend at one time, who was with us in the most esteemed places of knowledge in uh, the camp uh, in Damaj, studying with Sheikh Mukbil bin Hadi al Wadi, Allah Yarhamahu. We find out that this person has. Uh, worked for the CIA and it, this has become known throughout the news uh, all throughout the world that this person has described their experience uh, in their alleged growth as a Muslim and then they're spying upon the Muslims until they eventually left the fold of Islam and this is what this individual declared on the news and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best of planners and knows best. However, why I make an ishara to this, why I make a point to this, it shows you that we don't know how a person is going to end. And we don't know what a person believes inside. This is between them and their Lord, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And no one knows what uh, is inside the hearts of others. So when it comes to making judgments on other individuals, we have to be cautious because we don't know what their heart is. We don't know whether they're a believer. We don't know whether they're very sick in their heart and they're actually on disbelief, on kufr and, and zandaka. We don't know if hypocrisy has consumed them, uh, etc. So this is very important and it leads back to this naqid min nawaqid al-Islam where Muhammad ibn Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, that the person who hates something that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam came with, even if they practice it, practice this uh, practice in Islam, but they hate it inside, they have disbelieved. And in another nas or another uh, text of this, he said, Walo amala bi kafir ijma'in. He said that it is consensus of the Muslim scholars that this person has disbelieved. They have left the fold of Islam. And then he gave the ayat, wa dalil qawlahu ta'ala, thalika bi annahum qarihu ma anzal Allahu fa ahbata a'ma Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran in Surah Al-Muhammad, He said, and that is because they hate what uh, Allah has revealed, and so they have, uh, they have wasted their deeds. Their deeds have been erased. So that shows us that a person can be upon istiqama outside and their their outward appearance that they are they look like they're a person who holds on to the sunnah of the Prophet wasallam. They're following the believers. They're on the minhaj of salaf salih. But inside, inside their heart is a sickness to where they don't even believe, or that sickness can consume them, as Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in Surah Al-Baqarah. 
ان الذين كفروا سواء عليهم انذرتهم ام لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون ختم الله على قلوبهم وعلى سمعهم وعلى ابصارهم غشاوه ولهم عذاب عليم that the people that have disbelieved and uh, and Allah was specifically referring to those hypocrites ان الذين كفروا سواء سواء عليهم انذرتهم ام لم تنذرهم لا يؤمنون whether you those people who disbelieve whether you warned them or you invited them or not la yu'minun they still wouldn't believe khatam allah ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim wa ala absarihim allah has sealed their heart allah has sealed their heart khatam allah ala qulubihim wa ala sam'ihim and under and sealed their ears wa ala absarihim and their eyes they're seen so they're sealed in the heart they're sealed in the eyes and they're sealed in their their hearing ulaikahum kafirun those are the people who disbelieve walahum adhabun alim as allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and they are those people who have disbelieved and and they will have a, a, a severe uh, torment and we seek refuge in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from that torment shaykh abdul aziz ibn baz rahimahullah ta'ala one of the imams of ahlus sunnah in this time he said wa hakadha man abghadha shar'i allah aw shay'in min shar'i allah فمن ابغض شيء من شرع الله ابغض صلاته او زكاه او توحيد او صيام وكره ذلك يكون كافرا and then he read the statement of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ذلك بانهم كرهوا ما انزل الله فاحبط اعمالهم the sheikh abdul aziz bin baz rahimah allah ta'ala he said and likewise the person who hates the legislation of Allah or something from the late legislation of Allah some of the things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for example the person who hates something that Allah has legislated like hating the prayer salat or hating paying zakat or hating tawhid which is the asas of the deen those other things are arkan al-islam they are the the pillars of islam What tawhid is the asas of Islam it's the miftal jinna the la ilaha illallah it's the key to paradise but some people they hate this or siyam or they hate fasting and if they hate that then they are a, they have become disbelievers as Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala said and then he mentioned the ayat he gave the evidence very clear text not the mutashabiha the hadha ayat muhkama he said dhalika bi annahum karihu ma anzal Allah fa ahbata a'malahum and that is because they hate what Allah has revealed and so their deeds have been uh wasted or expelled or uh, are no longer uh worth anything and then the sheikh said rahimahullah ta'ala fal wajib al mu'min an yuhibba ma shara'ahu allah wa an yuwali ala dhalik wa an yuhadhdhir ma haramahu allah wa an yuwali ala dhalik wa an wa an yanqada li shar'i allah ayna ma kan So Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz rahimahullah ta'ala he said it's an obligation on the believer that they love what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed meaning the Quran and everything that's in the Quran all the laws and legislation everything from Islam everything that came from wahi from the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam uh his sunnah and, and so forth this is all what's called what's considered legislation So it's wajib upon the believer to love what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated and to base their love based upon that meaning al-wala wal bara the loving and hating for the sake of Allah is based upon that it's not based upon a hizb upon a group on a group of brothers and sisters you call yourself this name you call yourself this jamaat you call yourself this group you call yourself this sect no that's not why we love and hate we don't call to ourselves we call to the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and so it is an obligation as Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Baz uh rahim allah ta'ala said to love upon this love up based upon the sharia of allah on how someone adheres to the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam in practicing the islamic legislation wa an yuhadhir ma haramahu allah and warn against and avoid and be cautious about those things that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prohibited and love based upon that 
So the loving and hating is based upon what Allah loves and what Allah hates. And to practice the Sharia wherever uh, wherever you may be. And then Shaykh Abdul Aziz said, uh, Bin Baz Rahimullah Ta'ala said in another place, he said, وَقَالْ مَنْ لَمْ يَرْضَ بِحُكْمِ رُسُولِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَمْ فَهُوَ كَافِرْ فَوَاجِبْ رِضَى بِشِرْعِ وَرِضَى بِحُكْمِ اللَّهِ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى فَمَنْ كَرِهَا حُكْمِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ كَافِرْ وَقَالْ ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُوا مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهِ فَأَحْبَتَ عَمَّالَهُمْ نَسَّلَ اللَّهُ وَالْعَافِيَا So the Shaykh said, then whoever is not pleased with what Allah, the, the, the ruling of, of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then he's a disbeliever. So it is obliga- it's an obligation to be pleased with the Sharia, to be pleased with the uh, Islamic legislation, and to love Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala's uh, rules and commands, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. And whoever hates something that Allah uh, some of his legislation, then he is a kafir. He is a disbeliever. ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُمْ كَرِهُ مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ فَأَحْبَتَ أَعْمَالَهُمْ And this is because they hate what Allah has revealed, so their deeds were erased. And this is the thing. And then the shaykh made dua. And we ask Allah yeah, to, for al afia so this shows us the importance of avoiding, of, of, of being pleased with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. So the person who despises anything from the Sharia falls into this category and has disbelieved. For example, the, one, the person who dislikes the prayer and believes it to be difficult and impractical, then this person has left Islam. That doesn't mean this person is, that doesn't mean that, uh, the, for example, the person who is getting up has a difficulty getting up for Fajr prayer, for example, or t- they take a nap after Dhuhr and it's difficult for them to make the Asr prayer. Doesn't mean they're a disbeliever. No. That, that mashakka, this is not what we're talking about, that difficulty, but we're talking about the person who who dislikes that ibadah. Not the person who says, wow, this is difficult upon me, but I'm doing it. Oh, it's difficult. The water is very cold. It's in the winter and I'm making wudu. It's difficult. No, that's, that's natural. But the person who dislikes the prayer, oh, I don't want to make wudu. Oh, I hate wudu. Oh, I, I hate making salat all the time. I'm busy. I'm watching a movie. I'm busy doing this. I'm busy doing that. Uh, this is the person who has disbelieved. Why? Because they hate what Allah has revealed. They hate what the Prophet wasallam came with. This does not include the person who may find it difficult, for instance, to wake up for the Fajr prayer or make ablution in cold weather with cold water. As this is a natural reaction, as we are already explained. However, if this individual dislikes the prayer or hates to make ablution, then he has fallen into disbelief. Another example is the woman who detests polygamy, the woman who hates uh, polygamy, that a man takes another wife, a woman who hates that. Here's what uh, Sheikh Abdulaziz uh, uh, Rahimallah ta- uh, Allah Ta'ala said, the, uh, So whoever hates this Sharia ruling, meaning polygamy, has disbelieved. Therefore, it is imperative that women be made to understand that they should not abhor polygamy. Because this is the ruling of Allah and His Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. However, if a woman dislikes this ruling due to natural jealousy, or she does not dislike the Sharia ruling, then there is no harm in this. Or due to the fact that some men are not just, they're not being just with their wives. So she dislikes that an unjust individual practices polygamy. There's nothing wrong with this. Because she fears he will not be just, then there is no problem with that. So that's very important to to make that distinction there. Of when it becomes disbelief, when someone hates that law that the Prophet ﷺ practiced and that was legislated and is well known in the Sharia, 
uh, there's a difference between disliking that ruling and having a personal issue due to jealousy or disliking disliking the way someone is practicing because you see many men that are not giving being just and who are not being kind to their wives may Allah forgive us all of our shortcomings the reason a person becomes a disbeliever if they hate a sharia ruling is because they have negated one of the foundations of faith Loving Allah and the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what he was sent with. So this is the reason why a person becomes a disbeliever is because they are hating a Sharia ruling which Allah legislated and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was sent with and that means they have negated one of the foundations of the Islamic faith. Also this is a negation of the principle of Al-Wala wal bara of hating, loving for the sake of Allah, and hating for the sake of Allah. Loving for the sake of Allah is an obligation. And it entails loving the believers for their faith. Assisting, advising, and supporting them. Being merciful with them. And anything that relates to the rights of the believers. Allah says in His description of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad Salawatu Rabbi wa Salamu Alayhi that those, are, uh, those who are with Him are severe against the disbelievers and merciful amongst themselves. And this is in Surah Al-Fatih, uh, verse 29. This is the example of the Salaf, of the Salaf Asali. Those who preceded us in righteousness and God-fearfulness. It is an obligation to love all Muslims everywhere, during any time, regardless of their race, strictly for their faithfulness and obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty. Allah the Almighty says, the believing men and the believing women are protectors, supporters of one another. In Surah Al-Tawbah, and this is verse 71. Allah the Almighty also says, verily your protector is Allah, his messenger, and the believers, those who perform the salat, give alms, and they are from those who prostrate in... uh, obedience to Allah and whosoever takes Allah, his messenger and those who believed uh, as protectors, then the party of Allah will be victorious. And this is in Surah Al-Ma'idah, verse 55 and verse 56. This verse illustrates the love and the support that believers should possess for one another. And that love for one another is from faith. So this is a part of Iman that we love one another for the sake of Allah. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The family of so-and-so is not my supporter, but my supporter is Allah and the righteous believers. SubhanAllah. So the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his love was not based on his tribe. His love was not based on his community but it was based on the community of believers why because they loved for the sake of Allah and they practiced and t- worked together they supported one another in righteousness and in God fearfulness that is the strongest brotherhood and that is loving for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that is the uh, that is the, uh, the, the brotherhood based on faith not based on a hizb on a new group on a new sect, on a new uh, creed. Uh, we're the Ashiris, we're Jamaat Tablik, we're Ikhwan Muslimin, we're the Sururis, we're this one, we're that one. Or some people even misuse the name of Ahl Sunnah and say we're Ahl Sunnah, but in fact they're not Ahl Sunnah. Or they say they're Salafi, and in fact they're not Salafi. They're not practicing the manners and ikhlaq of Salafiyya. They're not practicing the minhaj of Ahl Sunnah. They're not practicing how to give da'wah the way the Salaf Asali. Or they're practicing his bia. They're calling only to them in their group of friends. They're five friends in that masjid. Oh, we're the only Salafis in America. All six of us. We're the Salafis in the UK. All two of us. We're the Salafis in Australia. One of us. Wa'iyadu billah min hizbiyya. So then, the other concept, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam also said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, by the one whose hand my soul is in, none of you will enter paradise until you believe. And none of you believes until you love one another. Should I show you something that if you practice it, it uh, you will love one another? Spread the greetings between one another. So we know that's from the usul. That's part of I- Iman. Right there. The Prophet ﷺ said it's from Iman. That's part of the I- Iman that we, we uh, the Kamala Iman. That makes our Iman full. That's the extra duties. Give salams to one another. Spread the salams and that will spread love between you. 
Believers love each other in accordance with their iman, in accordance with their domestic sunnah, not in their in accordance with bid'ah. So if a person has bid'ah or they have a lot of sins, then we dislike their sins and we dislike them in a relation to that. Meaning our, our love for the person who's more adherence here to the sunnah and more adherence to the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we love them more. And the person who has, uh, has sins, we love them less, but we still love them. The one who has bid'ah, we love them less, but we still love them, as long as they're not outside the fold of Islam and they don't have bid'ah mukaffara. Believers love each other in accordance with their iman, as we said. The other concept that requires explanation is the hate for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah warns the believers and assures them victory by distancing themselves, cutting off the path of disbelief, kufr and zandaka, and those that disbelieve in Islam and hate Islam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, take not as protectors and helpers those who take your religion as a mockery and fun from among those who receive the scripture before you, and nor from among amongst the disbelievers and fear Allah if you are indeed true believers. So how can is it, if someone is making fun of your deen, they are cursing the Prophet They're drawing pictures of the Prophet They're accusing the Prophet They're cursing the Sahaba to Rasul Or they're harming the believers. How is it that you can love a person like that? We're talking about those person, people who attack Islam, those people who hate Islam. We're not talking about someone who disbelieves in Islam, but they are not uh, hostile towards Islam. But we're talking about you can't sit in the company of someone and they're making fun, they're telling jokes about Islam. They're telling jokes about the Prophet ﷺ. They're ridiculing the companions of the Prophet ﷺ. You can't sit with those people. You can't mix with those people, drink tea and think and be all happy and gay with those people. وَعِيَاذٍ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ Allah also mentions how the Prophet uh, Ibrahim والسلام, separated himself from his own people and their false worship. Allah says, indeed there is an excellent example for you in Ibrahim and those with him when they said to their people, verily we are free from you and whatever you worship besides Allah, we've rejected you and there has started between us and you hostility and hatred forever until you believe in Allah alone. This is in Surah, uh, Surah, Surah Al-Mumtahina, uh, verse 1, the first verse. The main point regarding this issue is that the slave loves and supports everyone Allah loves and supports, and has enmity towards everyone that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Almighty has enmity for. As he is the creator, he's the best of judges. He knows that if someone hates him and hates his beloved servants and he, he dislikes them for this, then of course you should dislike what Allah dislikes. If Allah says this is haram, you should dislike what uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says is prohibited. And you should love those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said lawful. Loving for Allah entails loving everything and everyone that Allah loves and hating for his sake and uh, disdain for everything and everyone who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala dislikes. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. And anything I said correct was from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Anything I said it was uh, incorrect was from myself and the shaitan. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad.